famous musicians in the history of mankind. His fame rivals that of Beatles and Michael Jackson. I know there are many books out there and documentaries, but I feel they don't acknowledge the people who play key roles in making of a legend. So right now we're gonna give you eight hidden ingredients, spices that went into making of a legend of Bob Marley. The fact that Bob Marley had Bunny Wheeler and Peter Tosh as members of his group and in, in reality backup singers is, is like, I don't know, it's the craziest thing because Peter Tosh is a Grammy Award recipient. Bunny Wheeler is a Grammy Award uh, nominee. Both went on to have great solo careers. It's Peter Tosh that taught Bob Marley how to play the guitar because um, Peter Tosh is a, a tremendous guitar player who, who did a lot of studio work as a guitar player on a lot of reggae songs. People don't know about that. Joe Higgs is responsible for teaching. He's like a music teacher in a sense, you know? He, he did it for free, like, uh, <laughs> he did it for free in Kingston, but he taught Bob Marley, uh, Peter Tosh Bunny Weller, along with Jim Lee Cliff, the art of harmony, creating songs, creating melody, creating bridges and songs, putting the lyrics together, you know? So he's the man that really taught them how to compose music, and he's a great contributor to reggae music himself, a, a gentleman by the name of Joe Higgs that doesn't get the acknowledgement. Studio One is the Motown of Jamaica, created by Sir Clement Sir Coxon Dodd. It was at Studio One that Bob Marley had some of his, his uh, first earlier hits, uh, specifically Simmer Down, backed by the Scatterlights. Scatterlights is a group composed of Jamaica's greatest musicians at the time. Legendary names like Tommy McCook, Don Drummond, Roland Alfonso, Jackie Matu. At Studio One, Bob Marley was around some of Jamaica's top musicians and artists. He lucked out where Cox and Dodd was fond of him. He was able to stay at the studio when he didn't have a place to stay. And also he had a job at the studio as like a, a person that auditioned new talent on Sundays. Barrett Brothers started out at, as the hippie. They really started out doing uh, hotel circuits, you know, doing like cabaret, cabaret band. Uh, they linked up with the great Bunny Lee Striker to create the Hippie Boys. From Hippie Boys, they moved on to the Upsetters. And from Upsetters, they uh, dealt with Bob Marley. Austin Family Man Barrett, the bass player, was recently listed in Complex Magazine, top 40 bass players of all time. Not bass players in reggae, not bass players in Jamaica, not black bass players, bass players of all time. His brother, Carlton Barrett, he also was recently listed in an article by Rolling Stones that listed the top 100 drummers of all time i'll say it again not reggae drummers not rock and roll drummers not black drummers drummers of all time this man was listed at number 29 these are the people that played drum and bass for bob marley you know some of the world's greatest musicians not reggae some of the world's greatest musicians as a side note it is austin family man barrett that taught another legendary bass player how to play the bass a man by the name of robbie shakespeare the other half of Lion Robbie, the famous uh, uh, rhythm section of Jamaica. One the more plan on the El Dorasta, uh, Bob Marley was able to get direct uh, teachings from Mortimer Plano. For those of you who don't know about Mr. Plano, he's the man that, um, he's in that famous video. If you ever watched a reggae documentary or any documentary on Bob Marley, you see a guy on the plane with Selassie was coming off trying to calm the crowd, he was him. He is one of the few Rastas on earth to ever sit down with Selassie on numerous occasions and reason with him as if it was a break dream. Plano was also responsible for producing some of Bob Marley's earlier hits like uh, Selassie's Chapel. Uh, he actually wrote Hypocrites, chances are. It's Plano that instilled those Rasta teachings and Bob Marley that are evident in his music, you know, those social issues and all that. It's more than more that broke down and, and, and gave him that aspect of life. The I-3s consisted of Judy Mowit, Rita Marley, and Marcia Griffiths. These women, great vocalists, and all had successful solo careers. Judy Mowit, Rita Marley, and the queen of reggae, Marcia Griffiths. But 
A lot of people don't understand this. Bob Marley is not the one that put the i3s together. The i3s were originally put together by Big Ute, iconic uh, Jamaican DJ. Their first recording was on Big Ute's song, Every Nigger is a Star. It was after that, I guess Bob Marley was impressing, just boom, took them and, and, and added them to season up his music. Bob Marley's dealings with Don Taylor are, have been um, publicized, you know, the shady dealings of Don Taylor. Putting that to the side, we have to acknowledge that Don Taylor played a tremendous role of getting Bob Marley's name on the international market. When Don Taylor came to Bob Marley, he already had experience of being a manager for American bands. So he knew he had contacts and he knew the industry and he knew how to do his job properly. You know, and, and one can really argue without Don Taylor, maybe Bob Marley would not be as big as he is. We, we could actually argue that. Chris Blackwell is another person that gets a lot of slack from the reggae community for his, his financial dealings, his uh, relationships with uh, both uh, Bunny and Peter and Bob Marley. But putting that to the side, we have to acknowledge that when the Whalers were broke and had nothing and no recording industry in Jamaica wanted to deal with them, it was Chris Blackwell who gave him the funding to record the first classical album, Catch a Fire. It was Chris Blackwell who had the courage and the vision to invest in Bob Marley or the Whalers at the time and, and, and felt that they can be big. Please subscribe, comment, and share. And look out for more videos we have coming, you know, that breaks down the history and gives some insight about the reggae music and the Jamaican culture.